Okay, our student Rita is here with me to talk about equivalent expressions. Are you ready to go? Yeah. Okay, so equivalent expressions are just expressions that are the same. And let's do a quick starter example here. So we have a plus a plus a plus a. How many a's are there? Four. So how could we write an equivalent expression for that? Four a. Four a. Okay. Can you think of any other expressions that would be equivalent to it? Um, a plus three a. Very good. How about another one? 2a plus 2a. Good. And how about one more? Um, how about... Um, Can you switch the order of any of those? Oh yeah, 3a plus a. Very good. Okay. So all of those are equivalent expressions to the a plus a plus a plus a that we had over here. You could write that in the same way over here, okay? Okay. All right, let's try another example here. Okay. Sometimes we, it's just the order of the term. So we have 3x plus 7. What's an equivalent expression to that? 7 plus 3x. Very good. Okay, how about this one down here? Negative 2 plus 7a. 7a minus 2. Oh, very good. That's excellent. The, the tricky thing that you got there was what? It's a negative 2. Uh-huh. So the 7a has to be minus 2, right? Okay, very good. So always keep an eye on the positives and negatives as you're creating equivalent expressions. Now let's go over here and do um, use the distributive property and then the opposite of the distributive property, which is factoring, to do a few more examples of equivalent expressions. So here we have distributing. If we were to distribute that 3 into the parentheses, the t plus 6, what would... Um, we could, if we just write it out, but don't do the multiplication, what would that be? Um, 3t, 3 times t plus 3 times x. I mean, three 6. 3 times 6. Very good. Okay. Now, what if we were to go ahead and multiply that 3 through? What would we have? 3t plus 18. Yeah. And we could also write the multiplication like that, right? 3 times t plus 3 times 6. Or we can do what you just said, 3t plus 18. Make sense? Yeah. All of those are equivalent. All right, now factoring is when you go the opposite direction. So what we want to do is, um, and here's the little hint, find the greatest common factor. So we have this expression here, 15y minus 35, and we want to find the greatest common factor of these two terms. So that what is a factor that can divide into both of these? Uh, five. Five, okay. So the greatest common factor is going to be five. Let's go ahead and write that down. And now we can factor that five out. And we can do it just one step at a time. So let's just go ahead and write one of those. So I factor the 5 out of the 15y to leave 3y. And then minus, because remember the, the term here was a 15y minus 35, not plus 35. So I have the minus 5 times 7 to, to factor the 5 out of the 35. Mm -hmm. And you can also write it this way right here, right? Yeah. Okay. So both of those are equivalent expressions to what we started with here. And what would be the simplest way to write that equivalent expression if we do the multiplication? So 5 times the quantity, 3y plus 7. Okay, very good. Let's write, go ahead and write that. 5 times the quantity, 3y minus 7. Hmm, there's a mistake there, isn't there? Isn't that funny? This right here oh, should yeah. be a minus. But that's okay. Um, so what we basically have done is we've figured out a way to go ahead and write equivalent expressions in many different forms. And one way to do that is by using the distributive property or by factoring. Make sense? Yep. Okay, very good.